Hi Twin Flames and uh, welcome back to Tarot for You 444. Thank you so much for being here as always. It's uh, evening time here in Australia and it's been raining. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of in that sleepy energy. <laughs> ready to curl up like a cat on the lounge <laughs> or on the sofa and um, I don't know fall asleep <laughs> but I thought I'd bring you a video because I touched on a topic uh, the other day with regards to the twin flame journey and I thought it might be of interest to you and um, I was talking about the divine versus the distorted masculine and feminine energy and um, I just wanted to you know add a little bit onto this and then go in and explain to you you know perhaps why your connection with your counterpart isn't working and perhaps why um, you know um, you might need to understand a few little things uh, with regards to this and you know why it's not all coming together because you know um, sometimes you know you can click on a twin flame you know informational video and um, you know the general kind of you know s s I don't know um, what am I trying to say you know the general points will be you know your twin flame is your mirror um, you know your twin flame is you know the other half of your soul your twin flame is um, your best friend, your lover, your counterpart, you know, your significant other, you know, your best, um, I think I said best friend already. Um, and so, you know, all of these things are true, but, but we need to delve into understanding these things a little better um, so we can understand, you know, perhaps why there's all this separation. Because I know separations a big topic at the moment and I know unions also a big topic because there are a lot of twin flames who are about to come into union and who are in union and um, you know when I say union I can I mean you know final union at, um, you know as an end result so you know living together um, perhaps married perhaps partnering perhaps working together um, so you know I mean you know when I'm saying union in this particular video I'm talking about you know the end result of union okay so so let's talk about a few of these different topics first of all let's talk about mirroring as a first topic and what this means because you know it does sound a little bit confusing so I just want to raise this subject so that you know it takes the confusion out of out of it um, so you know we all understand you know third dimensional consciousness relationships and how that you know if you dated someone or if you were married to someone or if you you know were even in a friends with benefits situation with someone you know someone who's not just your friend but you know a lover or a significant other you know you have a relationship with them because generally you know you click on some level so you know there'll be chemistry there'll be um, you know perhaps you like some of the th same things or have some of the same belief systems perhaps and so you know you find yourself together and that's a soulmate relationship and these soulmate relationships you know can you know have growth in them and can have you know um, wonderful stability in them and you know they can have love in them and they can you know they can be good or bad um, depending on I don't know depending on <laughs> the circumstances because there's a whole lot of things you know within a relationship that make or break it but with a twin flame relationship with a twin flame you know um, you know in the twin flame journey there's a bit of a difference here because we you know instead of having this clicking energy where you know you seem to fit with one another in a soulmate relationship you know it's kind of like you know you two a jigsaw puzzle and you're putting the piece together and you fit because you know you both like 
I don't know, you both like golf and you both like, you know, watching Star Trek movies. <laughs> that's a pretty, that's a pretty fun one. But you know what I mean? You've both got similar interests, similar things and you know there's some chemistry there but with a twin flame on the other hand there'll be this mirroring that goes on and this mirroring is where people start getting confused because they're like hang on a minute you know what do you mean by mirroring that's a, a pretty strange concept you know because it's not a clicking into place like a jigsaw puzzle like with a soulmate relationship so let's use that metaphor for soulmate relationship. You know, the, the puzzle pieces click together and it's a fit. Okay, now with, <laughs> with a twin flame, they are literally your mirror. Okay, so if you imagined that you are looking in the mirror, okay, let's imagine you get up in the morning and you've got a really bad hair, your hair's everywhere. <laughs> and I don't know, some some men listening might not have much hair. <laughs> so I don't know. You've got a pimple on your face or you've got, you know, in the looks department, you literally look at yourself and, you know, you might say, I don't know, I've got bags under my eyes this morning or my hair's everywhere or, um, you know, I don't know. I spilled, I spilled yogurt on my on my t-shirt this morning and it, I better change my t-shirt right you know and so you know on a superficial level you can look in the mirror and see that there's a few little things that you might want to change you know you might want to change that top you might want to put it in the wash and get a new one because you spilt yogurt on it you might want to you know hop in the shower and wash your hair and I don't know perhaps you know use a facial scrub and get rid of that pimple or that kind of thing so that's the mirroring on a superficial level where you think, oh, there's a few little things that I could just change because, you know, that's just regular maintenance kind of stuff. All right. Um, you know, as you would in everyday life, you know, if you, I don't know, you know, each day you kind of think you might look around in the house and say, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't put the kettle there because it's too close to the toaster. And so you'll shift things around. You know, you can do this with yourself. You can look at little things and say, you know, perhaps my diet's not great. I might just need to change it a little bit. Perhaps my, um, you know, way of perceiving that, you know, particular topic, you know, about politics or religion or something, you know, maybe I need to just change my perception so I can be a little bit more open-minded. So there's levels of different depth, you know, when you look in the mirror and take a look at yourself, you know, you're looking at your self mentally, physically, emotionally, and also spiritually. All right. So what occurs here now is that when you meet your twin for the first time, <laughs> you know, all these, all these triggers will start happening because not only do you you know are you attracted to them like you would be a soulmate but it's times you know it's times a thousand you know what I mean like the level of intensity is so great and it, and it's kind of as if they can see straight through you so you know without even saying that you've got an issue you know that you I don't know, maybe you feel guilty because you, I don't know, once you answered your auntie back in a conversation and, and then you told your cousin that you hated her or something and you've got this guilt about that, you know what I mean? It's like your twin flame can feel this, like not necessarily know all of your hidden secrets and all of the things that, you know, are within you, but because they have the same soul, they pick up on it and in a conversation perhaps they might say something which triggers you and you kind of go oh my god I forgot that I was really upset about you know what I said about my auntie and I really feel guilty about that let's just say as an example and not only do they trigger these things within you that come up to the surface to be purged I guess you could say 
um, but they make you realize just how much you want to change for the better like how much like <laughs> for some you know <laughs> some twin flames might say oh my god before I met my twin I was literally in such a low vibrational state you know I was literally depressed and ready to um you know I don't know I'm not I shouldn't laugh but you know what I mean like I was so sad and so miserable and so not taking care of myself you know because it triggers that in you because they are literally your mirror so it's literally like looking at yourself in the mirror and all of the little superficial things will come up and you can change them easily you know you can change a t-shirt you can change the color of your hair you can change the the way you I don't know and the way you yell at your neighbor you might want to tone that down a bit you know as an example as a joke right but it's all the bigger stuff that also comes up for healing so you know have you got any childhood trauma that's not healed have you got any um I don't know deep dark secrets that you haven't forgiven yourself for you know because we've all made mistakes in the past you know did you realize how much you weren't taking care of yourself before you met your twin because your twin will kind of maybe without even meaning to remind you of the things you should be doing for yourself because they love you unconditionally and they're sending that vibration of unconditional love it kind of triggers you into realizing that you know perhaps you weren't giving yourself unconditional love and so I'll move on from mirroring now and talk about unconditional love for a moment so when you are in a, in a space of unconditional love you're in your divine energy so you'd be in your either your divine masculine or divine feminine energy and of course remember we have divine feminine and masculine energies within us and we need to balance those out okay so um, obviously I'm going to be using the words divine masculine divine feminine as you know the, the opposite counterparts um, or the complementary counterparts to one another um, but I want to bring up the topic now of unconditional love and say that when you're in a high vibrational state unconditional love becomes second nature okay so you'll automatically be inclined to want intimacy in a sensual way you'll automatically be inclined to have a passion for life each day you'll automatically be inclined to be loving and have humility and show you know to yourself and others you will show kindness and warmth and some sort of inspiration okay you'll also want the best for yourself and your counterpart when you're in your divine masculine and or feminine energy okay now in the distorted version which you know can come about at any time when we get in our ego right if we get in our ego or our mind too much we can get into the distorted energy okay so that's when the lower vibration or frequency you know brings on these negative connotations so this is when you will feel you know expressions like jealousy or anger or a lack of connection to God or source energy you know you'll be judgmental of self and others you might even be degrading to to uh, cultures or races or to the opposite sex um, you will validate toxic behaviors of yourself and others and you know you might even take part in you know lustful encounters with karmics or you know who you know for gratification okay so you'll seek pleasure you know a quick kind of pleasure not a long-term pleasure in things that might be drugs that might be alcohol that might be um, food that might be pharmaceuticals um, you know the misuse of um, different things and so then we have 
you know what we would call the distorted energy versus the divine energy okay so this separation that occurs in the twin flame journey can happen for one of two reasons number one you've been triggered by your twin flame because of the mirroring that occurs either on a subconscious as in they didn't mean to trigger you it's just their their literal energy triggered you or they've consciously triggered you by bringing up I don't know family a family situation let's say and then you remembered that you know you were mean to your auntie and or something right so they can either subconsciously or consciously bring something up for you um, you know whether they mean to or not is irrelevant um, it's kind of like they <laughs> they know how to do it because they're you know your counterpart your complement all right so this is the first reason that you can go into separation is because something has been triggered in you and you need to literally go away and sort that out for yourself. You know, I don't really want to use the term healing because we don't want to be in this constant state of thinking that we need to heal the self. We need to grow the self would be a better word rather than healing. Um, I don't know, healing, I don't know, healing just kind of sounds... I don't know a little bit too medical in nature so I don't want to I don't want to bring that word in I want to say that you know you're growing you know if you're purging uh, and you know forgiving yourself or um, or changing your perception on some kind of way shape or in some kind of way shape or form then you're growing you know so your twin flame will either trigger you so that you'll grow and then you go into separation because you need that time alone to kind of, you know, work it out in your own in your own mind, right? Or what will happen is one or both of the twins can get in their distorted energies um, and be low vibrational. And so when they're in low vibrational, they're far le less likely to come in in this loving way in this beautiful kind way in this warm intimate way in this passionate way okay so if you are a divine feminine or masculine in the divine energy right and you've got a distorted counterpart it's going to be very very hard for you to come into union and stay in union okay and as well as this trigger that happens because of the mirroring all right so then we move on to the last section which i want to say is that when you work on yourself and raise your vibration into that divine energy this is when you'll come into union because your twin flame will automatically be you know via the law of attraction the universal law right that like attracts like so you know you're already on the same frequency as your twin because you're the same soul but it's your vibration that can go up and down your vibration can be low in distorted or it can go higher into um, you know this divine energy okay so you'll always be you know the same soul and you'll always be together in the ethereal or 5d consciousness realm but in, you know, this physical reality, the only way to come into union is by working on the self. You know, removing any blocks and growing and descending as much as possible to your best self, to the best vibration of yourself, okay? And then your twin will automatically be magnetically attracted to you and I think if I quickly give an example of a restaurant idea here you know you go to the restaurant and you sit down and you know there's photographs on the menu of all of the delicious meals that you can order you know so there'll be entrees and mains and desserts and um and what entices you about this menu, whether you're divine, feminine or masculine, doesn't matter. But what entices you 
is how great each of these dishes looks. You know, if you've ever been <laughs> to an Italian restaurant or a Chinese restaurant or, you know, perhaps even Thai, you know, and you see a picture or, or even someone at the other table had a meal brought out and you see how well it's presented, you know, it makes you salivate. You know, you literally, you know, can smell it and taste it and you want to touch it and you want to be with it, don't you? And so automatically you know what your order is. Okay. Now, if we went to a mall, let's say, and walked into a restaurant that wasn't very sanitary or wasn't very clean and, you know, they're chopping up meals and um, it just kind of looks like, I don't know, mush on a plate, you're going to be far less likely to be attracted to wanting it. Okay, so this is where the twin flames become more attracted to one another. You know, if you are at your highest vibration and, you know, have grown as much as you possibly can within yourself to make yourself whole, you're going to be that wonderful restaurant meal that looks like a million dollars on the plate, you know, on a soul level and an emotional and physical level, right? And as, you know what I mean? Like all of you, not just the way you look, but the way you feel, the way you you present yourself, you know, that all of it combined is going to be far more attractive. You know, you're going to smell nicer, you're going to taste nicer, you're going to look nicer, you're going to feel nicer. And that is, you know, I don't know, irresistible to your twin? <laughs> Now, if you're going through the dark night of the soul or if you've ever been through the dark night of the soul, you'll know that you literally look like the mush on the plate at the other restaurant. <laughs> and you, can, you know, you know what I mean? You don't even, you know, if you took a selfie that day or for those, that time frame, you would, <laughs> you would look like mush on a plate from that, <laughs> from that restaurant in the mall in comparison and you know you would you know if you look back and if you take selfies of yourself or whatever and you look back at it at a time you know when you did that and you can see the difference in how how you looked you know the difference is immense sometimes you know because when you grow and come into your heart space you know and when you work on yourself you know, everything changes, you know, you can spiritually change, you can emotionally change, you can mentally change and, you know, you can also change, you know, out of this ego and into this beautiful heart space and so, you know, this is not to say that you don't have any boundaries or anything but, you know, it's coming into this lovely space where you feel like you could enjoy intimacy, you feel like you could be passionate, you feel love, you feel humility, you feel a connection to your God or source energy and your higher self. You feel inspired to get up in the morning and, you know, not only go to work if you have to go to work, but, you know, do your crafts, you know, if you, if you paint or you draw or you sing or you dance or you, I don't know, collect collect stamps is what Harry just said <laughs> you know what I mean so you have a passion for life you'll feel the joy from the inside out when you're in this in this divine energy you know and in the distorted energy you know <laughs> the the mush on the plate <laughs> you know this is someone who's not taking care of themselves this is someone who is looking haggard because they're feeling that way. You know, the way we feel on a mental and emotional level will affect our health too, will affect the way we look, will affect the way we present ourselves to, you know, not only our own, you know, family and friends, but to the world. Okay, so, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, 
I'm not being superficial in any way and saying, you know, that you have to, you know, dye your hair a certain color or wear makeup or not or all of that. I'm just saying in general, you just want to feel good. In general, you want to be taking care of yourself in a healthy way with regard to food, you know, on a physical level and in a mental way, you want to be telling yourself, you know, a nice story each day that, you know, everything's working out for you. Maybe, you know, doing some affirmations. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am, you know, fantastic. I am confident. I am capable. You know, you can do those I am statements. And then you can come into this divine energy. And when you do that, you know, the codependency can fall away because you're only reliant on yourself to feel good. And then if your twin does the same, only relies on themselves to feel good, right? As in self-growth, self-love. Then you can both come together as two whole people who then complement one another. Rather than being, you know, in a shell, let's say. I don't know why I use the word shell, but... Um, I think it's because, you know, if you opened up a shell and it's hollow and there's parts missing, as in, you know, you, you're not quite there with, with a few different things in, in the growth department that you want to do, right, then you kind of feel empty. And so if you're coming from a distorted energy of feeling empty and trying to fill it with someone else, then it becomes a codependency and then it becomes you know a distorted energy overall so the idea and the reason why many twin flame coaches and and you know um spiritualists and experts on this twin flame subject say you know you must go within and and you know and grow a lot of them use the word heal but i'm going to say grow right is so that you're a whole person as much as possible. I mean, we're always going to have our flaws and we're always going to have our fears and things. You know, we're always going to have, we're never going to be perfect. We're human. So, you know, you don't have to become enlightened. You don't have to be, become Buddha before you come into union. But you just have to work on yourself enough to know that there's a divine energy and there's a distorted energy. And when you come into this divine energy, then everything's going to be automatically attracted to you, including your twin flame. You know, this is when the job of your dreams will show up. The friends of your dreams might show up. The, um, I don't know, you might be at the shop one day and, you know, I don't know, you were looking for tuna on the shelf and there's none left. And then, I don't know, you've, been working on yourself and all of a sudden you know the tuna delivery comes in right when you're there you know you, you know magical things start happening <laughs> I don't know if, if tuna on the shelf is magical but I don't know I like tuna a lot so for me that would be magical <laughs> if you were after tuna it wasn't there and then all of a sudden it appeared <laughs> then that would be great um I don't know I think if you were a cat, that might be special too. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's the simple things that you can learn to love. It's the getting up in the morning and smelling the coffee and being grateful that you've got coffee to smell. It's, you know, that tracksuit that you wear or those sweatpants that you wear um, on a, you know, on a lazy Sunday afternoon. It's that, you know, the smell of rain. It's the, um, you know... You want to be near the ocean and you can't be, but you could go on YouTube and listen to ocean sounds. You know, there's a whole range of things you can do to keep your vibration high. And whether or not your twin flame is willing to do their own work is completely and entirely up to them. You know, the twin flame journey is not this, oh wow, I found my twin and now they have to come into union and come into mission with me. You know, 
that's not the thing at all that's not the case at all the the truth of the matter is is that we all have free will and you know you can't make someone be with you um you know or do mission with you and you know you might not even want to do a mission together you might just want to come into union or you might not and you know it's completely up to both parties you know you are two separate people and you do have free will you know this the earth plane you know is a free will plane so i mean obviously twin flames in union is a great outcome for humanity and for the planet if they're going to do some sort of service to humanity but it is totally up to each counterpart to decide you know even whether or not they even want to come into union or do any kind of mission or light work at all so yeah this is kind of food for thought and um i i guess i'll put it in my ascension playlist um you know because i think it's relevant i think it's going to help a lot of people to understand that you know if you're not coming into union with your twin it's because they're triggering you because of the mirror or because one of you is in your distorted energy and you know remember you can flip from divine energy to distorted at any time you know as soon as you come into your ego and have a meltdown you're literally in your distorted energy so you know for all of us we're all human and we can go you know our vibration can go lower and that's always expected but you know over time you'll get used to being in the divine energy as opposed to the distorted energy and this is when you can stay in a joyful state you know regardless regardless of other people and how they're behaving whether that's your twin flame or a karmic or a soulmate okay so happiness comes from within it doesn't come from outside of you it also comes from your connection to God or source energy or whoever you believe in right as well so you know your spiritual self needs work or growth your mental self needs work and growth your physical self needs work and growth and your emotional self needs work and growth and this will affect the whole chakra system on an energetic level okay so anyway i think i've said enough just for this one video so i'll say goodbye to you now and i'll talk to you very soon i'm sending you love and light and peace from australia and harry says hi and um sally and larry are doing really well they're still on their honeymoon <laughs> so i haven't they've just kind of i don't know i think they're out in the backyard somewhere but they're hiding um you know they're camping together because <laughs> they can't travel at the moment because of the restrictions however <laughs> they said to say hi they kind of called out to me earlier and told everyone to say hi all right anyway <laughs> have a great day night afternoon or evening wherever you are in the world and um yeah thank you for putting up with my silliness as well because you know that's part of who i am and um yeah i mean we get too serious sometimes so it's important to have a little bit of fun all right bye